Welcome back to the Death Row and Executions channel. I'm Paco Rivera. This is the second video in a row where I will be discussing a crime that happened when the convicted death row prisoner was 19 years old. Some of you might find the story of how Michael Tysus first began doing jail time somewhat unusual. Now, I'm getting this from a story told by Tysus's current defense lawyer, Keith O'Connor, so I'm not sure how accurate this is. Tysus was first arrested when he was 18 years old, sometime in the year 1999. According to the lawyer, O'Connor, Michael Tysus was arrested for failing to make payments on a boombox that he had purchased and picked up at an electronics store. No, he wasn't convicted to the death penalty for that. Now, Tysus's lawyer, O'Connor, said that Tysus failed to make payments on a layaway plan for the boombox. But the way I understand layaway plans to work is you make payments on a product and you pick it up uh, only after it's paid in full. This appears more as a purchase on credit since he was allowed to leave the store with the boombox. Anyway, Tysus later sold that boombox and used the money for drugs, and he stopped paying for the boombox. So he was charged with a crime. I know this all sounds almost ridiculous, and I'll have something to say about all this at the end of this video. I'm not sure what exactly the crime was. At this point, maybe robbery of the boombox. And Tysus was sent to Randolph County Jail to begin serving a 60-day sentence. This county jailhouse was once uh, a family's home, and it looked like somebody's house. It was a very old two-story Victorian-style brick house located near Huntsville Square in Missouri. That jailhouse was not very well secured and typically had just a couple of guards on duty at any given time. The front door is kept locked and one must ring a doorbell to get in. Once inside, there is a small foyer with a counter on the side and the guards were located behind that counter in what they called uh, the dispatch area. A long hallway led to the jail cells at the rear of the building. Anyway, Tysus completed his 60-day jail term and he was released and placed on parole. While out on parole, he is required to meet with a parole officer regularly and he does that for a while, but eventually he stops going. His lawyer would say that Tysus was living in poverty and did not own a car and had no transportation to get to the parole meeting, seemingly blaming a lack of transportation for the parole violation. Because Tysus failed to meet with his parole officer, he was sentenced to another 30 days back at the Randolph County Jailhouse. Tysus only needed to complete his 30 days in jail and he'll be freed again. But while in jail, he meets a prisoner named Roy Vance, who was 27 years old. This is a more recent mugshot of Roy Vance showing how he looks now. It appears during those 30 days that Vance began grooming the much younger Michael Tysus by filling his head with compliments and a brotherly love that Tysus had never experienced in his life of poverty and family abuse. Michael Tysus also thinks of himself as an artist, and here is a rendering that he created that seems to signify how he was treated while growing up. Roy Vance was being held at the Randolph County Jail because he had escaped from another prison for crimes he had committed and was later captured in the Randolph County area. Roy Vance tells Tysus that with the escape charge added, he is facing about 50 years. Though if that's true, it's unlikely that he will be held that long in this Mayberry Town jailhouse. Any fans of the Andy Griffith show? Anyway, defense lawyers would like to say that Tysus was brainwashed into uh, helping Roy Vance escape from Randolph County Jail after Tysus was released from jail. A release that happened on June 13 
of the year 2000. Roy Vance had instructed Tysus to meet with his girlfriend, a woman named Tracy Bullington, to get her help with the escape plan. And that is exactly what Michael Tysus did. Tysus called Roy Vance's girlfriend once he was out, Tracy Bullington, and they ended up meeting with each other regularly over the following days while planning the escape of Bullington's boyfriend. Tracy Bullington had a friend named Heather Douglas who would also testify that she would sometimes accompany Tracy, who drove her old brown Mercury Cougar, to go pick up Tysus and had heard them planning out how they were going to get Vance out of jail. Heather had also testified that her friend Tracy had a gun in the car. That gun, a 22 caliber pistol, as it turned out, was taken from the home of Tracy Bullington's parents. Over the following days, both Tysus and Tracy delivered cigarettes and some clothing, mostly socks, to Roy Vance in Randolph County Jail. Typically, as a, a message to Roy Vance that they were working on plans for the escape. It was later learned that Tysus had in his possession during those visits to the jailhouse that 22 caliber gun that Bullington took from her parents' house. Tysus had at one point test-fired the gun out the window during one of their drives on the road. On the night of June 21st of the year 2000, Tysus and Tracy were in the car and Tysus was playing a song on a cassette tape known as the Mo Murda song. And he kept playing this same Mo Murda song over and over in the car. According to Tracy Bullington's testimony later during the trial, that's when Tysus had said that he was going to the jail to do what he had to do. At about 15 minutes after midnight, Tysus rang the doorbell outside the jailhouse door and he and Tracy were allowed in. This was 15 minutes after midnight. Jail is allowing people in there. He had the gun in his pants. There were two jail guards inside, Leon Egley and Jason Acton. Tysus told them he was there to deliver more cigarettes to Roy Vance. Tysus and the guards made small talk for a few minutes when suddenly Tysus raised the gun, pointed it at Jason Acton, and shot him in the forehead, killing him instantly. He then went to shoot Leon Egley, who was moving toward Tysus in what appeared to be an attempt by the jail guard to jump him. Tysus shot multiple times, dropping Leon Egley to the floor. Both jail guards were unarmed. The guards at Randolph County Jail did not carry a weapon. Tysus found some keys in the dispatch area and then went down the hallway to Roy Vance's jail cell to get Vance out. But none of the keys worked. So Tysus went back to the guards dispatch area again to look for other keys. At that moment, Leon Egley, who was lying on the floor bleeding, reached out and grabbed Tysus's leg. Tysus then shot him several more times and then fled from the jailhouse with Tracy Bullington. The great escape from the county jail turned out to be a total failure, and two men working at the jail had lost their lives. Tysus and Tracy went in her old brown Mercury Cougar to Kansas, and soon after crossing over the state line, the car broke down. During the drive, the keys from the jailhouse, still in Tysus's possession for some reason, were thrown out the window along with the gun. Authorities soon after discovered the abandoned car and later captured both Michael Tysus and Tracy Bullington. They also recovered the jailhouse keys and the gun. This case would result in trials for three people, Michael Tysus, Tracy Bullington, and Roy Vance. And there was a witness who testified that he had seen the whole thing happen at the jailhouse. Apparently, there was another jail guard at the jailhouse named Wilbur White who testified 
that he saw Michael Tyson shooting, but from the area that he was located, he could not tell who or what Tyson was shooting at during those moments. There's no indication in the reports I've read as to why this witness didn't take any action. Remember that the guards at Randolph County Jail were unarmed, and he may have taken cover in fear for his life. Roy Vance's cellmate, a teenager named Thomas Antle, who was 17 years old and locked up for driving while intoxicated, testified that Michael Tysis had fumbled with the keys for several seconds and then left the jail area back down the hallway soon after. Thomas Antle said that he then heard several more gunshots fired after Tysis left the area. Roy Vance, who was locked up inside a jail cell when the jail guards were killed, faced murder charges for planning the whole thing and was sentenced to two terms of life imprisonment without the possibility of parole and one term of life imprisonment. He is now serving time at the Eastern Reception Diagnostic and Correctional Center in Bonterre, Missouri. Roy Vance's girlfriend, Tracy Bullington, pled guilty to two counts of second-degree murder and was sentenced to two life terms. She remains a prisoner at the Chilakatothi Correctional Center for Women in Chilakatothi, Missouri. Michael Tysis was convicted for the two murders and sentenced to death. After a successful appeal by Tysis's defense attorneys, his first trial was overturned and a second trial was held in the year 2010. He was found guilty again and sentenced to death again. He remains on death row at the Potosi Correctional Center in Mineral Point, Missouri. Including Tysis, there are 15 inmates currently on death row in the state of Missouri. All men. Looking back on the details of this case, it is possible to conclude that Michael Tysis's troubles leading to his conviction, leading to him landing on death row and his likely execution in the coming days, all began with a boombox. Please remember to subscribe for more death row and upcoming execution stories. I'm Paco Rivera. Bye for now.